Joel Embiid's career is about to leapfrog in ways that even the most experienced experts of the game never, ever saw coming. Because it's true, Joel Embiid sometimes reminds us of a quicker and more skilled prime Shaq, which is just scary to even think about. You know, 52 points on 80% shooting from the floor got me thinking. Huh, MVP, but really, how in the world did this man get here? Um, YouTube? Really? <laughs> yes, really. Well, actually, Joel Embiid's apparently looked up to 30-year-old white guys wearing Everlast shorts at the local 24-hour fitness, saying that those dudes always have the wettest jumpers on the block. And by his own admission, Embiid learned how to hoop by watching YouTube and just hitting the gym constantly. When he was 16, you and I could have beat him in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. Now, he just might be the best player on planet Earth and just became the first center in decades to win back-to-back -back scoring titles, with a handful of those points coming off moves he learned from his childhood idol, Hakeem Olajuwon. Just a year after Embiid's sentiments that the NBA media downright hates him. Here he is now, looking head-on with the MVP trophy, looking more and more like it might be his to lose. I mean, 33 points on 55% shooting and 86% from the free throw line? At 7'2 and nearly 300 pounds? Stop it, bro. That's video game stuff right there. We just knew he'd be great the moment he stepped foot in the NBA. Embiid was looking up to LeBron James, who ran the East with his Cavaliers for four straight seasons. So, took a page out of LeBron's book in a game and met Bron when he thought he had an open layup at the basket. But similarly to how LeBron chased down Andre Iguodala in the finals against the Warriors and blocked his shot, Embiid came out of nowhere to swat LeBron's shot into another dimension. Joel Embiid blocks LeBron James' layup. Cavaliers vs. Sixers, November 5th, 2016, 2016-17 NBA season. We see you, young fella. And I guess that 2017 was the year JoJo had his coming out party as a superstar because he had some of his more memorable moments that season. I'm talking about the time Embiid took matters into his own hands and stuffed one all over the face of the Rockets. Like, this was just cold, man. Let's look between the lines of Embiid's career story. Joel Embiid was born in Yuande, Cameroon on the 16th of March, 1994. Embiid played volleyball and soccer as a kid and originally planned to play professional volleyball in Europe, but he started playing basketball at age 15, modeling his game after NBA Hall of Fame center Hakeem Olajuwon. Joel Embiid was discovered by Luke Baamote, another Cameroon native and an NBA player, at a basketball camp in the country. Embiid moved to the U.S. at the age of 16, taking Mute as his mentor. He attended the Rock School in Gainesville, Florida, where he averaged 13 points, 10 rebounds, and 2 blocks his senior season. Then, Joel attended the University of Kansas, where he played for the Jayhawks in 2013-14. In his only season there, he played 28 games, in which he averaged 8 rebounds, 2.6 blocks, and 11 points. He was given the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year honors, and also made the second team all Big 12. He, however, missed the Big 12 tournament as well as the NCAA tournament due to an injury. Joel Embiid declared for the 2014 NBA Draft. He was selected with the third overall pick by the Philadelphia 76ers six days after his declaration. Multiple foot and knee injuries delayed his debut for two seasons until 2016-17, when he was named to the NBA All-Rookie First Team despite playing only 31 games. Embiid had received four All-Star selections. He's nicknamed himself The Process in response to a refrain from 76ers fans during the Sam Hinkie era to trust the process. Embiid is also eligible to compete for Cameroon national basketball team. But recently, Joel has stated that he might change his nationality to French in order to compete on the French Olympic team. That could happen in these upcoming Olympic Games. Embiid's professional career began with an outbreak of spectacular plays, which he displayed on the court often. After that, everything went uphill for Embiid's career, including his economy. Joel Embiid managed to accumulate a lot of money in the first few years. But amidst all this personal success, Embiid still takes time to give back to the city he plays for and has called home since 2014. Embiid is committing to donate his all-star game winnings $100,000 to Philly area homeless shelters, which provide meals, clothing, 
COVID treatment, healthcare, summer camp, and essential care for teens. So many have fallen on such hard times during the pandemic, Embiid said in a statement. I felt it was important to provide more support for individuals and families struggling with homelessness and food insecurity. I'm continually grateful for all the support that Philadelphia and the fans have given me not just around the All-Star game, but all my years in the league. I will continue to help in any way I can. In another generous effort, the three-time All-Star pledged to donate $500,000 to support medical relief efforts for COVID-19. A long-standing believer in the process, Embiid has spent time researching the most efficient ways to provide immediate aid to healthcare workers serving on the front lines. Embiid himself speaks with a lot of confidence, always putting his name up there with the best who are playing right now. Embiid believes he should always be in the MVP conversation and is currently in the top two for voting this season. Embiid is quoted saying, a player of my talent should always be in MVP conversations, defensive player of the year conversations, and all NBA. It should be like that every single year. Embiid has been backing up his praise for himself with his praise on the court, having his best season by far, averaging more than 33 points per game, while leading the Sixers to top three seed in the Eastern Conference, as he looks to lead his troops to a deep playoff run. His head coach, Doc Rivers, has taken note of how dominant Embiid has been since he took over the team this season. Rivers has compared his star player to NBA legends like Patrick Ewing and Kevin Garnet, calling Embiid a hybrid of both. Rivers is quoted saying Kevin Garnet was a four. I played with Patrick Ewing, I would combine those two together and make Joel in some cases because he has a little bit of both of those. Embiid has already established himself as one of the best big men in the NBA, and now he's being compared to some of the best big men of all time. The NBA has had plenty of dominant big men play the game, and it's only a matter of time before Joel starts accumulating various accolades in his career and joins that list. Because when you have the talent like Embiid does, actually, let me show you instead of going on and on about how good he really is. A few seasons ago, Embiid took a page out of LeBron James' book in a game against LeBron and the Cavaliers. James had a seemingly open look at a layup early in the first quarter, but in a similar fashion to how LeBron chased down Andre Iguodala in the finals against the Warriors and blocked his shot, Embiid came out of nowhere to deny James of the basket. It was a tremendous showing of athleticism by the big man and demonstrated his basketball intelligence to avoid a goaltending call as well. Anytime you can block the king, you are doing something right. Joel Embiid blocks LeBron James three times in one game. On the first possession of a contest against the Houston Rockets, Embiid decided to give his Sixers some early momentum. With fellow big man Nene guarding him one-on-one, -on -one, Joel charged into the lane and threw a filthy left-handed power dunk over the Rockets' center. The game was at home and the crowd was fired up after the play, and Embiid even earned a little shove from the Rockets' superstar James Harden as he was running back up the floor following the dunk. Let's just say that was not the only time Harden and Embiid crossed paths. But what if I told you that this bar hasn't even loaded halfway? Embiid's got plenty of career left to play, and with how he's dominated the NBA over the past half decade or so, there's no longer any doubt in anyone's mind, Embiid is him. To be continued, I guess.